The words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and risen Redeemer. Amen. He has arisen with ongoing power. That is God's word. After the Sabbath day, when morning had broken, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, and remember there was a violent earthquake also on Good Friday connecting these two events. And an angel of the Lord came down, walked over to the tomb, discarded that stone in front of the tomb, sat on top of it, his countenance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow, and the guards did not faint when the earthquake took place, but when they took one look at that angel, it was a seismic event, according to the text, and they dropped over like dead men. The angel, as it was there, saw that the women had come and said to them, Do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus Christ, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen with ongoing power, just as he said. Is there anything in all of history that you can think is like the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead? No other religion, no other philosophy, no other worldview has anything like this, like the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It is the great reversal from Good Friday. In the Hebrew, they call it this. It's the shoe revu, the turning of the tables, when Christ turns the tables on death and rises to proclaim victory over the grim reaper. Did you also notice that this happens not on the Sabbath, but on a work day? The first day of the week it takes place. It's as if God is saying here that he wishes to invigorate in our steps, invigorate in our work, that we are to be animated by this good news in everything that we do. That history is not just the movement of a squirrel cage, but every day we take one step closer to heaven, and every day we work as disciples of the risen Lord, who is working everything together for the good of his bride, the Holy Christian Church. The fruit of this event that took place back then is only the beginning of how history will be impacted positively. We now have confidence that the work that we do is in the name of the risen Savior and not merely work. It gives us a whole different perspective on life as we journey through life and head to eternity in the new heaven and new earth. What irony in this text. The men on the outside were to be watching the person on the inside. The person on the inside is supposed to be dead, but he's alive and well outside, and the men that were supposed to be alive watching him are as good as dead because of the fear that came upon them when they beheld that angel. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary are also about to faint. They take a look at this majestic creature that Jesus had made and sent, they look at this creature and they're just about ready to faint, but in less than a trillionth of a second, the angel speaks to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and says, Do not fear. I know that you've come here to see Jesus who was crucified, but he is not here. He is risen just as he said he was going to do. Rise on the third day. We celebrate Peter's boldness at Pentecost. We celebrate St. Paul's proclamation that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ apart from good works, 
we celebrate the solemnity of the Apostle John, the Word, God, became flesh and dwelt among us, we should also celebrate Magdalenic fidelity, Mary Magdalene's fidelity. What a woman of loyalty and love and faith in Jesus she was. She stayed there at the foot of the cross to watch by far and away the most horrific death in all of history as Christ Jesus suffered for the billions of people that would ever live, crucifixion and hell upon the cross. She stood there and went through that difficult time. And she was there also when they laid the body of Jesus in the virgin tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. And now she is there when morning has broken, gone to the tomb to pay respect to that Lord who had died for her. The message of Easter can't be heard if a person is paralyzed with fear, you just simply don't hear. So the angel wants to open up her ear and to bring her a message of good cheer that the one she is looking for to see, who she thinks is dead, is alive and well. And now she has the greatest story on earth to tell. Because Christ is risen from the dead, from the dead and this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is the beginning of a whole new eon and era. Start spreading the news, the angel tells him. Do it quickly. Go and tell Jesus' disciples that he's planning to meet them in Galilee. As they began to be filled with joy and fear, you can be filled with both joy and fear. That sometimes seems like a contradiction. Joy and fear. But I heard a young man the other day said, Oh yeah, that's very possible. I've just been married and I'm filled with joy and fear. <laughs> joy and fear. They are beginning to go back to tell the disciples the good news. And seemingly out of nowhere, Jesus appears. And he says to them, our text says, Greetings. But really what he says is he just appears out of nowhere. Hi there. Hi there. It's a very down-to-earth, earthly greeting by Jesus to show his humanity. And then we see, on the other hand, his divinity as the women worship him. He is both man and God, victor over death, divinity and humanity on display. Now Jesus tells them, don't be afraid. And the shift in the language is very telling. Go tell my brothers. The angel had said, go tell the disciples. Jesus, by using the word brother, signifies that he is going to restore them back into fellowship. They who had abandoned him, who had denied him, he says, go tell my brothers. With Easter, there not only is the message of victory over death to the risen Christ, but the message of forgiveness to the whole wide world. Go tell my brothers. Jesus meets them and greets them to send them and you and me on a mission in life. They are to tell people Jesus is alive and well. They are to proclaim that God is interested in restoring us body and soul. They are to announce the good news that forgiveness of sins is connected with the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And they are to tell people that there is ongoing power in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Every baptism has the power of Christ at work. Every time we have the Lord's Supper and Jesus gives us his very body and blood, the power of the risen Christ is at work. Every time the gospel is proclaimed, the very same Trinitarian power that raised Jesus Christ up from the dead is alive and well, go and tell. What the women are experiencing is only the beginning of a wonderful eternity to come, of a life that is filled with high heavenly hope and the knowledge that they have met one who is both God and man who is both Redeemer and Savior, who is both Lord and friend, 
with them to the end and for all eternity, this is most certainly true. And the peace of God that passes all understanding may guard and keep your hearts and minds in the only hope of history, the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.